What's the defining quality of a top Splatoon player? It's not fancy mechanics. It's not perfect aim. It's the speed of making the decisions and the lack of hesitation doing them. Today we're going to be looking at the best support in all of Splatoon, Bursty, with the most explosive player in the game, Zero, accompanied by two NA players that are destined to become champions, Goss and Wave. We're going to be looking at a flawless game that they played in the most recent major, Super Jump 3. This is a game nobody remembers, but was the most memorable match of the tournament for me. These are the decisions that will make you better. These are the decisions that will make you a top player. I want to highlight their pace of play. I want to highlight their positioning. I want to highlight how they decide to take fights, where they decide to take fights, and how they recover after fights to continue a push. And I also want to give a big thank you to Bursty for letting me use their stream footage. All of their socials will be in the description. But thank you again, Bursty. And yeah, let's get into it. No stealth on this. Sir. No drop on the Dropping right already. Walk up there. Just right. Right. Hey. Go on. Sorry, bottom left. Bottom left. Yeah. He's one. I'm going on the left side. Third. Clear front left. Grab it. You want to pack? We can trade. Yeah. Alrighty, a lot happened there. Let's break it down. A lot of small decisions that a lot of teams get wrong. They have a blob dropping and then they end up having a splash drop. The important thing that I want to note is the decision making after those picks. So Zero immediately makes the decision, get onto the enemy team plot and force the ball point to either have to back, jump out, but in general, give space to the team. Zero is able to get a pick on the ball point which speeds up their push significantly. Even if zero goes down, it still provides the rest of the team an opportunity to take space through mid and start pushing on to the plat. This is a good play either way, but again, you know, top player, they're, they're gonna find picks in these situations. Also, I left side. Third couple. Third front left. Third the other thing that I wanna note here is that within five or six seconds, we have zero up in their bats. Goss on plat. Bursty on plat. Bursty's already used special. They have three players already looking at next steps. After you take mid on Inkblot TC, you want to take control of bats. This is where that next fight is going to take place. So ideally, if you get picks fast enough, you want to be able to push into this area before the enemy team does. If we're able to make it into this area before them, then they will be unable to drop from their spawn and it gives us a significant advantage because that means that we do not have to use our specials to take control of bats. We already have control of bats because we got here first because we were so fast. We wasted no time. There was no hesitation in mid and we know the next step is to start building in their base, fortify their bat area, so that we can hold and look to continue this push after the first checkpoint. Once tower gets to checkpoint and once Bursty gets this key paint to just slow the enemy team down from pushing onto their plot, Bursty ends up swapping with Wave, who is the ball point. They end up swapping tower so that Wave with ball point and their special, which is inkjet, they have the ability to move into bats and look to use their special when the enemy team is trying their best to come out of spawn and they're looking to drop down here and we can stop them because we get here faster. You want to pack a can trade? Yeah, yeah, we can trade it. Yeah. So they end up trading here and because we're able to move forward fast, we're taking the tower completely uncontested, which allows us to get this paint on, on left side anyways. We get to paint this anyways. Another small decision here from the Tower Rider. This is really important on a lot of maps where the rest of the team can't cover a specific flank. Bursty doesn't really have to focus on anything. They just have to ride Tower, get the checkpoint, and have it keep moving. There isn't anything that they can really help with when it comes to bats. There isn't really much they can help with. You know, they can't really help their teammates at all. So the most important thing that you can do in this situation is to open your map and get information. And right now, what Bursty is looking at is this drop over here. No one else on the team can look at this far drop. So Bursty is looking here, trying to see if there's gonna be any additional paint. 
and you'll notice that there is some paint that ends up showing up in this area. They're able to call that out and support this. Also, when you look at their formation as a team, so we have our longest range weapons doing their job. We have our short range shooter. They're able to rotate. You know, they can flank around this way if they have to. They can drop, which we'll end up seeing here. They drop into mid. They can rotate any direction and they can get paint and poke with bombs. So the way that we're set up here is so good. And you'll see later on that our formation, every time that we're pushing like this, it, it, it just makes sense. This area, we'll see that there's some paint in here. And because Bursty is watching this, because there's literally nothing else for them to be doing at this time, except for maybe doing a little bit of paint, but you can also paint while you're checking the minimap. They're able to call it out. Zero is also able to spot it. And they can look into this area, get the pick. Packs right here. I'm dropping right now. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. Let's go. Packing now. Wait, can, can we kill Ballpoint? He's low. Yeah, he's one. 70 cooler. How oh, is he alive? Yeah, yeah. Again. How close is it, guy? Cooler front right. So after the checkpoint is when they decide to use Ballpoint. And they decide to use the inkjet. So our two players and bats decide to use their specials to find the pick. And specifically, they're looking for a pick onto the ball point. Because if they can get a pick on the ball point, they have range advantage and there's no other potential threat on the yellow team to stop this push. So they've identified the most important target here being the ball point and over time are able to find this pick. So they get their pick on the ball point. Zero has Zuka again on the V shot. Bursty has painted for another cooler because tower control. And they are continuing their push at this time. I think it on tower now. Oh shit. He's struck on tower one more. That's just good. Bob is flanking right now. Okay, I'll find on their steps. I gotta get on tower here. I should be swashed in. That hit me twice? Oh wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So here two people on our team go down and this is where Bursty has to make the decision to regroup. As the support on the team with being an end zap, it's so important to give the rest of your teammates jumps. So even though your, our team went down, even though we have a player advantage, it's really important to, for us to get safe jumps so that we can continue this push very seamlessly. If we can give our teammates jumps, we can get in position to start taking fights before the enemy team can get into position to defend. This is the importance of playing for control. We're not playing for picks. We already have control of the map. Our teammates spawn in before theirs. It's really good for us to get these jumps. Because if we can regroup as a team, we can start looking to move forward and we can keep this push going. Keep the enemy team in this cycle and not give them a chance to play the game. They're always going to be on the defense in this scenario. One thing I do want to mention that's really good from Goss here. So Bursty got jumps for our teammates over here. Goss really has freedom at this point to do anything. So they get the splash ball down and they're able to pressure this ball point over here. It's not really within the steps of our guide. It's a little bit more advanced. But there are these little timing windows between when we're able to actually take fights. It's kind of during that rebuild and fortify step, that step two. But if we have additional specials or we have additional resources, so the squeezer in this case is that additional resource, we can look to pressure them because this pressure is basically free. There's nothing else that DOS could be doing at this time. So they're putting down the wall and they're just pressuring the last person on bats. After Goss gets this pick on ball point, again, no hesitation. No hesitation at all to get back into bats and hold control like we did during that first push. It's the exact same setup. They do notice, however, that this splash, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see them swimming in here. So the splash isn't going to be able to do much by themselves being over on these ledges over here that's a very common place for the enemy team to try to defend from so goss looks to push this way 
but they notice the splash pushing in from the goal. So with two down on the enemy team, there's enough time for us to actually change our path and we have enough time to come back over to this right side and look for a pick. Whether we get it or we don't, it doesn't really matter. There's just this small timing window where we can do whatever we want. So we're going to look for a potential pick opportunity. And again, we're good players. We're able to find those picks. But after this pick, it immediately goes back into that. Yeah, we're on check, it's gonna break. Oh wow, farming right now. Storage on me. Keep it being on chopper. Bob is going. Bob is going. Or. I'm just gonna pack it. Keep it on me in front. Going bad, still hold. I'm catching him. I'm dropping chopper. So I want to know here, and we'll see this formation later, Squeezer sitting in the enemy team attic. It's a good angle for them. Ball point, able to retreat if they need to, but can also, so if the enemy decides to push and drop from any of these areas, ball point's in position to be able to assist. And then we also have our shot player also over here playing underneath these ledges and, you know, looking for an opportunity to catch someone that's sitting on the ledge trying to defend. Really good setup. We'll see another version of this at the very end of the game. So at this point, zero has gone down. So we just finished with step three, engaging the opponent. This is a potentially risky scenario. So Bursty as the support makes the responsible play, immediately moves into position to regroup with the team. They're retreating only as far as they need to, and you'll notice that they actually push up to that stronghold of bats and giving the shot a very specific jump to safely get in and keep this push going. They don't back up too much. They don't try to keep taking fights. They just need to get back into full force and then they can keep this push going, but they are the ones in control. They don't need to be desperate. They don't need to take a fight that they shouldn't. You know, there's, there's no reason to ever take a risky play and potentially wipe out here. Even though they're the better team and they could go for that play, and a lot of times it probably will work out, Bursi knows in the situation, give jumps, go for the consistent play, it'll pay off in the end. Playing bats to hold. Yeah, so playing bats to hold. Can give jumps to the shot. In any of these areas, they'll be able to get in safely. They can Bursty's able to hold bats by themselves in this situation. And so right here, Bursty goes for a fight with the blob. Again, it's one of those like free plays potentially. If they don't get the pick, they can retreat, which is what you will end up seeing here. But if they, you know, they have time to take those shots, if they get the pick, then it just makes the play significantly easier for the rest of the team. Unfortunately, don't get the pick and then they see the stamper starting to push into bats. The important thing to know with the stamper is that they have a significantly longer range than the zap. If you're the shorter range weapon playing against a longer range weapon, you want to use cover to be able to close the gap with the enemy. And that's what we see here. Percy's using this cover here. If the stamper wants to push, it's, they're going to be closing the gap for us. And we can potentially look to swing and take a fight. I'm going to guess Percy didn't go for this here because they're pretty low. They already took a bunch of damage. And they know that they have teammates here. So if they can just stall this fight out, they'll win it over time either way. If the stamper stays where they are, we can't really push them. But that's still good for us because we still have control of bats. So we just move around. Again, at this point, we this is a bad fight for us. In this situation, if Bursty, you know, tried to jump and move forward at the stamper, tried to engage the stamper, this is not a good fight for us. So they move from high ground, they use cover, they use this booth as cover to close the gap and then take a shorter range fight with them. It also gives them additional time to heal, and they're also in a safe position behind the booth to wait for their teammates to come in, which is 
what they plan on setting up and that's what they communicate that there's someone low in baths and that you know if someone can come through they can very easily clean that up but fortunately Bercy is able to find that pick even though that they win this fight they still plan in a way to allow their teammates to help them so even if they didn't win this fight they still have that backup plan already ready to go and that's something they've already communicated no, I'm here, I'm here. Right. Mm -hmm. this is that in between nice. time so we'll see right here zero gets their special they get the trizuka here on shot and this is that in between time we just 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 got a pick on the stamper so there's at least one or two people that are going to be staggering in later than the first two people that spawn on the enemy team this zuka here is totally free if we don't get anything it's not going to stop us from continuing this push because as you'll see later zero's going to put themselves into a position underneath this ledge over here and they're going to be sharking under the ledge which isn't going to be a good position to use zuka anyway so we can either use it now or we have to awkwardly use it which could be a liability later on so this is a totally free play and again this is kind of that in between you know as you're rebuilding painting and your team is setting up for that next fight if you already have a special ready you can look to use it a lot of times frontliners will also look to potentially shark and sit at a weird off angle to catch the enemy team off guard and find a pick that way so there's different ways that you can use this free time goss used it before by pushing throwing a wall down and just poking at the enemy and just hoping for a pick and fortunately they're able to get it every single time that they are between fights they still find these little engagements and little opportunities to find advantages okay. so you'll see zuka are already used by I got it. Zero. I'm not gonna use him on this tower. And is able to find a pick with it already. Like, we're on so after that, they set up for this final push. They already got the third trigger point. There's so much happening here. Wait, yo, KO? Okay. Get the KO. But a couple things that I want to move here. I'm close to Zuka. I got it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use him on this tower. Like, we're on the card immediately goss moving back into this position up onto the attic of the enemy team and i'll i'll show you why here in a second cool little cool cooler interaction first he gets this pick and before before bursty even lands this is how efficient they are with their time before bursty even lands use up a super jump back to the tower because it's faster and safer then walking through this uninkable area back to tower those are the little efficiencies that you'll see from top players it's so impressive okay. this also gives us a great angle to see this kind of final formation that their team goes in and why it's so good so goss is an attic wall down zuka out zero playing underneath the sledge Bursty could also be playing underneath the ledge and in front of the tower. And then we have Wave on ball point sitting on tower. The important thing to know with this position is that any potential angle, any angle that Cherry Limeade would potentially drop from and push through at the end of this game, and if they decided to push this way, all of these areas are covered by the entire team. Everyone on the team is able to rotate or for their squeezer and for their ball point. They're all within range to hit every single one of these areas. These are minor things that these top players don't even have to communicate. They're already by default, without hesitation, already going into these perfect positions. This is just very consistent, solid, coordinated team play. There is no time where there isn't a backup plan if their mechanics fail them there is no moment where if their mechanics go wrong the whole push is in jeopardy they constantly have backup plans in the case that their mechanics fail them and that is what makes them so impressive as top players and that to me is why this was the most impressive notable game from the last splatoon major